Preparation of the 1920 CBE budget was a little bit different. Uh, without a provincial budget, the CBE paid very close attention to the governing party's pre-election statements and their election platform. After the election, we paid particular attention to any government statements related to public education. Based on those sources, the CBE developed a 1920 school year budget based on the concept of maintaining funding equivalent to 1819. That meant that we did not roll out $22 million in funding, or the equivalent of about 220 school-based staff, to our schools, even in the face of growing enrollment. We also imposed $3 million in spending cuts on our service units. That was in addition to spending cuts in other years. We also dialed back our capital spending and implemented rigorous cost management. And finally, we deployed some of our modest reserves to help ease the transition from a growing budget to a maintained budget. In a word, significant. The CBE had built its education plan and budget for the 1920 school year on a maintain funding assumption. We now know that we must implement outright cuts of at least $32 million on top of the budget reductions already imposed. The budget also imposed budget cuts as of the beginning of the school year. That means that the required cuts of at least $32 million have to be found within the dollars that remain unspent for the remainder of the school year. Said another way, the cuts required to achieve an annualized reduction of $32 million will likely be closer to $48 million. And for context, $48 million is the entire budget for about four and a half large high schools. That's the magnitude of the cuts we need to implement. As I said, the impact will be significant. The October 24th budget did several things. First, it did maintain the basic grant applicable to all students. Unfortunately, that basic student grant amounts to only 66% of the CBE's total government funding. Then, the budget eliminated three grants that had a direct impact on students in the classroom. Government eliminated the class size funding grant that amounted to $54 million for the CBE. Those dollars funded approximately 540 teachers in kindergarten through grade three classes across the CBE. Also eliminated was the classroom improvement fund that $13.2 million grant provided approximately 150 teachers and other educational supports in our classes across our 247 schools. And finally, the government eliminated the grant related to the Act to Reduce School Fees. That $18 million grant provided instructional materials and supplies to all 125,000 CBE students and provided fee-free or fee-reduced transportation to our 23,000 yellow school bus riders. In place of those eliminated grants, government provided a one-time transitional grant of $24 million. Government also provided enrollment funding and other uh, small grant changes totaling approximately $29 million. When it was all said and done, the CBE will need to implement at least $32 million in cuts to meet the government's budget targets. In essence, everything is on the table. $32 million is too big a number for an easy fix. Class size increases, staffing reductions, fee increases, as well as program and service reductions or eliminations will need to be considered. Time is short and the challenge is large. The longer we wait, uh, the bigger the challenge becomes. Uh, we only have the remainder of the school year in which to implement our $32 million in reductions. I would anticipate that the changes will start to roll out in the next few weeks and continue through most of November and December. While the CBE does have some modest operating reserves, our reality is that our reserve levels are well below the recommended guidelines from Alberta Education. As well, we need to be mindful of the innumerable surprises that can come our way during the course of a school year. 
For example, government has just announced three new schools for the CBE. Turning buildings into schools and staffing them accordingly will cost money. Our reserves are our one source of funding to bring schools online. So reserves are definitely part of the solution, but they are not the solution. Yes, certainly the Education Centre lease is a significant burden for the CBE. That said, the Education Centre lease makes up only approximately 1% of the total CBE spending. We have reviewed our Education Centre lease agreement on numerous occasions and no readily uh, available options present themselves. We will, however, commit to doing whatever we can to either reduce or eliminate those lease costs going forward. We are essentially back to uh, the drawing board with regard to our 2019-20 school year budget. With 80% of our budget going to salaries and benefits, we will have to look at staffing levels across the system. With more than 80% of our total spending directly supporting students in the classroom, schools and classrooms will be impacted. Staffing levels drive class size, so we anticipate increases there. With growing classroom complexity, that will be a very big challenge and a big concern. We will have to look at fees. With the elimination of the Act to Reduce School Fees funding, our transportation program has been particularly hard hit. Fee increases and service level changes are a very real likelihood. And we will also need to look at all of our other programs, services and supports. Are they sustainable within this new budget context? I would anticipate changes for both the remainder of the school year and for the future. We are working as quickly as possible and we will communicate as much as we can as soon as we can.